In the last video, I introduced equations to you guys, and we talked about how equations are like scales or balances. Um, remember that an equation is like a scale that is balanced, and so to keep the scale balanced, are both sides of the equation equal? Whatever operation we perform on one side of the equation, we have to perform the same operation on the other side of the equation. And remember, like I always say, what you do to one side of an equation, you must do to the other side. I can't stress this enough. In formal terms, we call this the addition or subtraction property of equality. And that told us um, we can add or subtract any number to one side of an equation. And as long as we add or subtract the same number on the other side of the equation, we will have an equivalent expression or equivalent equation meaning that the solution of the equation will not change. So now let's put that to use and solve some equations. Okay, first one, x minus 6 equals 11. Okay, now we're going to solve this equation for x, meaning that we're going to find the value of x that makes this equation true. In other words, what value of x makes x minus 6 equal to 11? Um, so when we had a balanced with an unknown weight, uh, we wanted to get that unknown weight alone by itself and then count the weight on the other side to find how much that unknown weight weighs. Now with here we got the variable x and that's our unknown value. So we want to get it alone by itself. And to do that we need to get rid of this negative 6 that's on its side. So we need to cancel this out. And to do that we can add 6 to the left side and that will give us um, 0 so the x will be left by itself. But then if we do that to the left side of course we have to perform the same operation on the right side and add 6 on the right side. So we're going to do that now. So we'll get x minus 6 and then add 6 to cancel that 6 out and isolate the variable. Then we'll have 11 and then add 6 to keep the equation balanced. So we'll have x and these uh, negative and positive 6 will cancel. And then we'll have 11 plus 6, and that gets us 17. OK, good. We solved the equation. One of the nice things about algebra, though, is that we can check our answer. So we can put 17 back in for x in this top equation and see if it works out. So I'll do that now. So we have 17 minus 6 equals 11. And I'll put a question mark sign because we're checking to see if this works. So we'll have 17 minus 6 is 11, and 11 does equal 11. That, make, that might not make sense there that we have 11 on both sides, and what does that tell us? When we're checking our answer, we're looking to see if both sides of the equation match. So we can say it's a true equation. Um, that's a true statement that those are equal. And that tells us that the value we found for x it, it works. So we can say, yes, x does equal 17. OK, now I, I know we took a while to solve that problem, or solve that equation. But like most things, it'll start out slow, but you'll get uh, a little quicker as you move on. So on to the next one. OK, we have y plus 0 0.3 equals negative 0 0.9. So the numbers here aren't quite as nice, but the process is still the same. We need to isolate or get the variable alone on one side. So our variable this time is y. So we need to get this y alone by itself. And the problem here is this positive 0 0.3. So we need to subtract a 0 0.3 to cancel that out and do it on the other side as well. So we'll do that here. So we'll have y plus 0 0.3. Um, oh yes, we need to subtract the 0 0.3 and then do it on the right side as well to keep the scales balanced. OK, those cancel out as promised. So we get y equals negative 0 0.9 minus 0 0.3 is negative 1.2. OK, so we solved it. Now we need to check it. So we'll put in negative 1.2 here for y. So we'll get negative 1.2 plus 0 0.3, uh, excuse me, I'll keep it in black, does that equal negative 0 0.9? OK, negative 1.2 plus 0 0.3, that is negative 0 0.9. Hopefully this arithmetic isn't um, 
too difficult for you. But yes, negative 0 0.9 is negative 0 0.9. So we can say, yes, y does equal negative 1.2. On to the next one. This one's a little more difficult. Um, hope you guys weren't thinking they were all going to be that easy. But anyway, um, this problem is unlike the other problems because the other problems you really could have done in your head just with arithmetic. This one, you'll actually have to use algebra. So there's no uh, shortcut out of here. Um, we're going to have the same strategy here. Um, we're going to try to isolate the variable. But it's going to be a little more difficult because we got variables on both sides of the equation. But we'll still be able to do it. Um, to start, it helps if we remember that an equation is just two expressions. That's expression on the left side, and then there's an expression on the right side. And, just, and the first thing we need to do here is to simplify both these expressions. So hopefully we remember how to do that. We need to combine like terms. So we have 3x and 4x, those are our two x terms on the left side, so we'll have 7x, and then take care of the constants as well. 3 minus 2 is 1, and then on the right side we have the x terms are x and 7x, so we'll have 8x, negative 3 plus 7 is positive 4. Okay, so now we need to get the variables on one side, and then get the constants on the other side. So let's first get the variables on one side. Now to do this, we can either subtract 7x from both sides and just get the variables on the right side, or I'll subtract 8x from um, both sides and get the variables on the left side. I'm going to subtract 7x from both sides, and I'll show you why that's the better strategy in a second. 7x plus 1, then we subtract 7x, and that will cancel out on the left side. Then we'll have 8x plus 4, and then 7x to keep the equation balanced. Okay, so these cancel out. Then we're left with 1 equals 8x minus 7x is just x plus 4. Now, it was better that we subtracted 7x instead of subtracting 8x because when we subtracted the smaller number um, from the from the bigger number, that left a positive x, whereas if we would have subtracted 8x from both sides, that would have left a negative x. Now we could have solved it the other way, but it's just a little easier having a positive x. So now we're um, just left with something simple, so we need to isolate the x by um, subtracting 4 from both sides. So we'll do 1 minus 4 equals x plus 4 minus 4. Okay, so that gives us negative 3 equals these cancel out x, otherwise known as x equals negative 3. And so we can check this one as well. I'll do this in red. We'll plug in um, negative 3 for x up here. So we'll do 3 times negative 3. It's, it's a little more tedious than the previous ones, but I'll speed through it just to show you guys that it was the right answer. Okay, now some arithmetic. Uh, if I can find my pin, negative 9 minus 12 plus 3 minus 2. We should put a question mark there because we are checking to see if this equation works out minus 21 plus 7. Okay, on the left side, negative 9 minus 12 equals negative 21 plus 3 equals negative 18 minus 2 equals negative 20. On the right side, negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6 minus 21 is negative 21 plus 7 equals negative 20. So negative 20 does equal negative 20. So that means negative 3 equals x or x equals negative 3. Okay, on to the last problem. Um, now with this one, uh, we again need to simplify both sides of the equation first. But the left side's already taken care of. Eight's pretty simple. Um, so we need on the right side, what we need to do is distribute and then combine like terms. So we'll get eight equals negative three b plus three 
mm, negative 2 times negative 2b equals positive 4b and negative 2 times 3 equals negative 6. Now combine like terms, negative 3b and 4b. Negative 3b and 4b gives us b. And then 3 and negative 6 gives us minus 3. Now we add 3 to both sides to isolate the variable. 8 plus 3. I'm going to underline it instead of changing colors to show you that we did apply the addition property of equality. So we get 11 equals b, otherwise known as b equals 11. I don't feel like doing all the work of checking this, so I'll leave it to you guys. But anyway, it's a good good idea to check it all the time. I'm just kind of lazy and don't want to waste your time on this video. Uh, that's all I have for this video. This is um, something that just takes some practice. So you can check out my webpage I have for this video. It's linked in the description box. And there you'll find some practice problems that you can work out. And I'll see you guys next time.